so let's begin with this uh, demo first and whatever questions you have on the course details and when is it going to start uh, all those details you will be getting it so we just wait for till the end and uh, let's begin with today's part okay if you have anything to ask you can put it in the chat and mute it everyone because i don't want unnecessary uh, background hitting us so at the end when we will start the question answer that time i'll unmute the people so let's begin guys so today uh, i'll be taking up uh, taking you up towards uh, with the concept of since there are a lot of things in ncc np security definitely we would be diving into a very small topic today which is very very important and common to know when we learn about security and that is we will be learning on an ipsec with the help of ftd okay so let me just put down some points for you people so ftd is a cisco's product and it's a next generation firewall cisco's next generation firewall okay we do have cisco has two types of firewalls or we can say it had as yes, there is a history behind it but we won't get into that as of now so we all we had an asa which cisco was using and still using till the time end of life will come okay so what was the difference why are we going from asa towards ftd so the major reason is it's a next generation firewall and we are all good to at least know a very basic difference between the next generation firewall and a normal firewall is it has more advanced features in doing deep packet inspection dpi or we can say in simple words layer 7 inspection okay so this is one of the thing which makes it different from a normal l3 l4 firewall asa was purely some a firewall a stateful firewall that was able to do l3 up to l3 l4 processing okay i mean whatever you we know what is a pro firewall and etc that it wants to control the the traffic which is moving in a specific direction and what kind of traffic we have we all know that according to the osi model we have it from l1 to l7 so up to what level of control my firewall can get you know or the access my firewall can get to the packet and detect if there is anything you know malicious anything is any wrong traffic or anything which is going to cause a problem to my network so i can only have uh, i was restricted up to l3 header or l4 header that this is the control i have but with next generation firewall multiple things came up that i can do up to application layer inspection that okay if anyone is going with http https traffic as well i can go and do ssl decryption okay i can go and try to decrypt the traffic and then try to inspect it so there are good you know processor which is working with signatures and trying to understand whether any kind of uh, the traffic is been uh, with the actual traffic something something malicious or some anomalies are going with that traffic or not okay so next generation firewall has many many features one of them i have mentioned is layer 7 inspection it does ssl decryption it can do user identification okay we can identify user we can identify application so these all identification is also something which is a part of the next generation fire so today we are going to discuss the ipsec with respect to ftd now ipsec is being one of the protocol that we all know okay i'll take up your questions guys don't worry ipsec is one of the protocol we know which is used for implementing the vpn concept we can form vpn or ipsec 
the protocol the vpn can be formed between the ios routers you might have learned you can form it between the asa devices you can form it between the asa and a router so you can make several combinations as per the enterprise design okay you can make it between an ftd and an asa an ftd and an ftd an ftd with the palo alto so there are several combinations of firewalls because depending on whichever sites you are working with, we know there could be a headquarter. There are different branch offices, branch one, branch two, branch three, branch four. So we can form a topology likewise and we can also make an IPsec like this where it will be acting like a hub and a spoke. So where this is my hub and the others are my spokes. So IPsec is a very, very important protocol to be understood for implementing a VPN. And especially when we talk about VPN, the major classification which we say, okay, the major classification which we say about the VPN, if you all know, is a site-to-site -site VPN and the other one is a remote access VPN. Okay, these are the two very popular implementation of VPN when we are talking about. And when I'm talking about IPsec, we mostly refer for the site-to-site -site VPN. Now, the classification of VPN can be done in a numerous way. Okay, in a numerous way, I can do the classification. So, for example, if I am trying to classify based on the type okay that majorly the vpn we have understood can be classified as a site to site and a remote to site or a remote access you can say simply the site to site is majorly where we see ipsec protocol is used to implement the vpn whereas in the remote to site Majorly, we follow the SSL-based VPN or a web-based VPN. We do have an option here also to choose IPsec, but we mostly rely with SSL in this case. Why so? Again, a different, you know, discussion on that. Fine. Uh, Taimur, you have a query. Yeah, what is exactly difference between SSL and IPsec? Okay, so they are different protocol. Okay, at present, when we say IPsec, it's a layer 3 protocol. IP inherently doesn't have any security, we all know. So to provide the security, we developed this protocol, IP security. So it's a layer 3 protocol. Whereas when we talk about SSL, it's a protocol that works at the transport layer or in between the transport layer and the application layer. So the way of implementing, the way of uh, design, the, the way they have been designed is different altogether. Okay, so this protocol, it, we can classify them as L3, L4 based. Like, okay, IPsec is a part of an L3 protocol and SSL is a part of, uh, you know, we know we have used HTTPS. We majorly use HTTPS for accessing different websites. So when you say HTTPS, this S stands for security, we all know. But how is the security implemented using SSL or TLS? So we know how secure we are when we are connecting to any web server. The same technology, the same concept we are trying to implement using for the VPN, especially remote to side VPN when we are doing work from home, sitting at home, we are accessing all of our applications of our company, of our enterprise, any application, any software, any of the resources, we are making use of remote to side. So we are definitely there. We have an option for going for IPsec also. The fallback can be designed with IPsec, but majorly SSL is preferred 
between a client and a site. So that is one of the difference I can tell you. Okay. So today we would be exploring more on site to site implemented with the help of IPSec. Okay. And uh, we will see a demo on FTD, which is our Cisco's next generation firewall, which can do all types of L7 inspection, which can detect malware, which can do SSL decryption, which can do uh, URL filtering. SSL is preferred on, on remote, remote VPN over IPsec. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Any based on what parameters SSL VP, SSL protocol is preferred on a remote uh, remote VPN over IPsec? See, this is completely where we are talking in terms of like I want to have a certificate thing, and on what basis we decide whether I should be going for an IPsec or an SSL VPN is one, the one of the factor is we know that. When we're talking about IPsec, we will be deciding how the peer configurations are done. Because more or less, when we are going for side to side, the configurations on the both the side of the firewall, the IPs are going to be static. Okay, so in very less scenarios, we would be seeing that we will be making use of the side to side with the dynamic. IPs there where we will fall or we will see a different concept there with the hub and spoke with VTI concept. That's a different concept altogether. When we talk about SSL based VPN, it is easier to implement. Okay. It's more easier to implement and it is way secure. Okay. That is what makes SSL much bet better use for, you know, remote to site than for then with the help of IPsec. Okay. We will discuss, don't worry guys, we are just going to, I'm giving, giving you a very small, very 0.1% of the things what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So let's talk about IPsec. We will discuss about SSL and SSL based VPN in a different go. So IPsec. VPN, I hope everyone is known, knowing all about a VPN. Is there anyone who can just define why do we have to use VPN and why, uh, what is a VPN? A very, very simple question. Virtual private network. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad that you could answer the full form. Guys, don't expect this. I don't expect this answer. Virtual private network. Exactly why? Why do we need this? Uh, actually, we actually, just... Uh, uh, virtually, we connect to the two network. Any network, it could be virtually. I'm trying to connect any network you may can you hear me yes yes yeah so actually vpn is used uh, to access the resource from your organization from your any remote location okay you want to uh, your vpn is used for accessing your resources you mean to say your organization mostly your organization resources you can use from remotely remote location yeah okay. by using private ip okay Okay, I can see people are taking some good uh, understanding. Okay, so before VPN, what was there? Sorry? VPN was not there since the very start. There was something and still now I can't say that everywhere VPN is used. There are some uh, critical confidential uh, resources we have where we generally don't prefer a VPN there. Yeah, basically VPN is used for secured access of uh, resources from different uh, remote locations mm -hmm. that's connected through the internet. Right, right. So it's a private network con communication, you can say. Private networks because all our organizations, we have our local area networks which are having a private subnets. So it's a private network communication over a public infrastructure where public infrastructure is a very complicated term. If you think it's simply an internet. 
which is publicly there the infrastructure is built we don't need to build a different infrastructure altogether so a uh, infrastructure is there for you you just need to use it and make a virtual tunnel on it so nobody sees it it's a virtual tunnel but it is this tunnel is used majorly for this private network communication okay so you have two different sites you have a site a your one office is in new york connected to internet another office is in let's say california so you have two different offices branch offices there are some resources which are there in site b because majorly the employees have to use those resources on frequent basis on site a the employees don't ha uh, have that particular uh, thing hosted the software or something because they are not much of a use but sometimes if required if i want to get the access i can go and take the access via the internet but internet itself is not secure so but it is cheaper internet is not secure but it is cheaper but i don't want to compensate the security over the cost so we got these ipsec protocol which can add up our cia goal which can add up the confidentiality which can bring me the integrity which can bring me the authentication which can bring me to give the to achieve all the security goals required so it's a private network so on both of your side you are having your private networks you're communicating over the internet by forming a virtual tunnel okay you're forming a virtual tunnel so none of the networks on internet would know that there is a virtual tunnel going in between these two different branch offices and the security is being taken up by this ipsec protocol where ipsec is trying to say that i ensure you the security you go and use the internet because it is cheaper so you can implement your solution that problem you want to connect two different branches you have different resources there you want to connect it okay so initially when there was no vpn we used to have these direct lease lines dll where we need to go through the service provider make up an agreement they will do a direct lease link connection where only your traffic would go to those links none of the other organizations or a uh, public traffic would travel via that particular link so you go and sign up make up an agreement pay the amount set up the those people will set up a network dedicated lease link connecting your site on the with the other site maybe through the submarine level or via the satellite or whatever different ways were there but that was very very costly too costly to implement though you have ensured the security that nobody else traffic is going over there on that link but it's too costly to implement you may have to invest in terms of crores of rupees to implement it based on the amount of bandwidth you require the amount of resources you want to share with all those calculations so the alternative solution the cheaper solution was to implement a vpn and ipsec guaranteed the security over it so when there was no vpn there was a dll link still with banking organizations with defense with military where we don't we have very very crucial critical information we don't look out for a vpn as a solution we still go with our old traditional way of connecting with the direct lease links all right guys so ipsec is a security protocol it's an l3 protocol ip inherently didn't had any security we developed ipsec which had a suite of protocols i can't say ipsec is just one protocol it's a suite of protocols which have multiple protocols to take care of different security needs and with that we are implementing this tunnel and we are able to ensure that our traffic only goes through that tunnel so it's a cheaper way of implementing it so this site a and site b there will be two devices which will be facing towards the internet okay let me just clear this diagram so we'll have two different sites as i said okay a lan network of site a we say 
so this network will be connected with one particular there will be one device which will be facing towards the internet okay now that one device which we are talking about it could be a router also it could be uh, your ftd devices ftd1 ftd2 it could be your asa devices it could be simply your firewall might be sitting behind a router and you are forming a VPN or a site to site communication. Maybe your router is facing your ISP so service providers, uh, router is facing here and your firewall is sitting behind it and then you are forming a site to site VPN. There could be various scenarios there. Okay, but the simple scenario which I can discuss currently is let's say you have a basic network and your firewall is facing towards the internet and your job is to set up a VPN tunnel or an IPsec tunnel between these two sites. So none of the people would know your internal network. So these networks are called as private networks guys. So you're trying to remotely access things over the internet but these are all your private network communication. And I hope we all are aware of what is the meaning of private networks. All those private subnets, which we have learned from each of those classes, those are the networks which are there behind this firewall. And we are trying to communicate seamlessly with the help of this tunnel over the public infrastructure. So our job is to make that tunnel, you know, build that tunnel, not by digging, but virtually we are making a tunnel. Okay, so as I said, it's a suite of protocols and we are guaranteeing security goals. That is, we want to have confidentiality. I hope all of us know what is the confidentiality. None of us should, none of the people in between should be able to read that information clearly. So we will be in implementing on confidentiality with the help of encryption. There are different encryption algorithms, symmetric, asymmetric, Okay, I am not getting into this for now because it will take another session, another hour to understand all these encryption types and it's the way it works. But I'm just giving you the hint that what security, when people say internet is fine, but where internet is not secure, no problem. We are using IPsec and there will be suite of protocols like Ike version 1, version 2 and for data traffic, we will be using a different set of protocol like ESP, AH, etc so uh, sorry madam i have one question please yeah so so we can say we can use here cia mm -hmm. can we use here a protocol cia protocol is not cia cia no no i mean the term cia what is cia confidential integrity availability Right. But we are talking here not about the availability in this scenario. Availability is not going to be a problem. More or less, the goal is confidentiality, integrity, authentication, and anti replay attack. These are the four security features which we are trying to guarantee or implement using IPsec. Then what a role of anti-reply? Anti-reply, the role is basically, what do you mean by replay attacks? First and foremost, understand that. That a hacker is able to intercept your traffic and trying to play it again and try to understand the response. Okay, by simply taking up the packet, maybe modifying the sequence numbers or simply taking it and passing it and trying to, you know, choke up your uh network by putting those packets again and again so anti replay means my firewall should be able to distinguish the firewall or could be any other device here on the site different side that it will understand that okay this particular packet uh with this and this information has been come and has been arrived before and this is again if it is trying to put that packet then i can detect it that is the meaning of anti replay that I can ensure that if anybody is trying to put the packet back, play the packet with those information, if anybody has intercepted and trying to play it again, my firewall will simply drop it because it knows that this is something which is, which I've already got this packet. And now again, if I'm getting it, so this is not the right one, I should be dropping the packet there. 
okay so there are ways to implement all of these four like confidentiality i said it has been implemented with the help of encryption because you don't want anybody to know read your information clearly only those people who are involved in the communication the sender and the receiver or here in this case we use this words initiator and the responder whoever is initiating the communication okay is known as initiator let's say if ftd1 is initiating he will be known as initiator and he will be known as responder so whoever is initiating is known as initiator and the other side is known as the responder so we don't we just want these two entities to decrypt the traffic or to read the traffic clearly rest all should not find this easier to decrypt it. so that is being achieved with the help of the encryption different set of encryption algorithms we have there integrity nobody should be able to tamper or modify my information it should remain intact whatever i am sending if i am sending you 1000 rupees nobody will intercept in between and come and modify to 1500 or to 2000 rupees so the integrity is implemented with the help of again some hashing algorithms we have authentication proving its identity that i am the right one you are talking to you are not talking to some buddy who is trying to mimic me or trying to uh, in, you know trying to act like me so i should be able to prove the identity so again here i would be making use of hashing algorithms i can make use of some digital signatures if i am trying to make this concept used with the help of uh, certificates so digital signatures can be used for people who are new please don't worry this may sound greek and latin but these are some terms some algorithms which are used to implement this concept so just giving you a very brief idea confidentiality not able to read it directly integrity should be able to see the message as it is no words no some nothing should be changed it should remain as it is authentication when you prove your identity to somebody by giving your passport or any of your nationality uh, certificate you prove your identity that you are a person who are born in that particular country and you have all those relevant documents so that is how you prove your authentication by proving giving your identity documents an anti replay a way of figuring out that none of the packets was received before or not some, no some hacker or someone was playing the packet again and again trying to you know play a sort of a dos attack or try, trying to play a sort of you know uh, just consuming the server making the server down by playing the packet again and again so all these four vpn secure uh, vpn would offer you all these four security features when you say that you're implementing vpn and what security features does it give you anybody can ask you such a query it gives you these features okay and how are they be, how are they being achieved there are set of protocols now we will be learning okay set set of algorithms which i will be telling you okay so ipsec is just a name that it is a protocol but it's a suite of protocols so majorly when we will be learning this okay so what what we would be doing is when we talk about ipsec i'm giving you a very very broader picture that the first thing is we try to identify whether we are implementing this with version 1 or version 2 so ike is a protocol now which you have got into uh, got into picture which is internet key exchange so this is one protocol okay so with this protocol either version 1 and version 2 now the difference in everything it's going to come up later so we will be trying to understand that how can we implement the tunnel because the goal is to implement the virtual tunnel the internet infrastructure is ready the site inter uh, both the site branches are ready so we have to form that basic tunnel ensure that all these four features are implemented confidentiality integrity authentication and anti replay and then we will see that the traffic will go via that tunnel we need to point the traffic that the traffic should go to with the help of the tunnel if site a wants to speak to site b it should not be going via any other way it should be taking up the path which we have created 
So to create this tunnel, which we have it, guys, there are two ways again. Whether you're creating this tunnel with the help of policies or whether you're connecting this with the help of a routing thing. So we say whether it is a policy-based VPN or whether it is a route-based VPN. Both has its plus and minus. Okay. Majority of the companies, whether you're using Palo or Forti or whatever, they are generally following route-based VPNs because they're very simpler to implement. Okay. Policy-based VPN are also supported on those firewalls. But if you ask anyone, that major implementation, that which implementation are chosen majority of the times, whether it is route-based VPN or a policy-based VPN, then you would find that this is majorly being used. Okay. However, this is also when you would choose it for a specific scenarios, the policy-based. So what is a policy-based? A policy means what? Simply defining that who is given an access from site A to access the resources on site B. You don't want all of the people, the departments, the teams who are working in site A to go and access the resources in site B. Maybe only the HR department has to go and access some documents from site B. So only the HR who is in that subnet should be given the access. So here when we will be defining policies, we will be defining those subnets that the source subnet is this, the destination subnet is this, only allow these particular subnets traffic to go via the tunnel. Okay. A route based is altogether a different concept. So policy based is simply defi defining who should be given access from site A to access the resources on site B. So we will clearly define it in the policies. Okay. So when we will be talking about version one, guys, here we would have two different phases of implementation, which we say phase one and phase two. Means you're building the tunnel, not directly. You're first trying to authenticate your two peers. So we say in the terminology, the two, the two different devices which are facing the internet, this will be considered as let's say peer one and peer two. So the first step is to authenticate the peers. That is the first goal in phase Excuse one. Excuse me. Yes. One question. Yes, regarding uh, uh, route-based VBN or uh, policy-based VBN, at this stage, where are we in like version one or like version two? Or uh, I got confused in this. The policy and the route-based you're talking about? Yes, is it? You can, uh, you, are you we can in, implement in like both. version one? Or? You can implement both on version one as well as version two. The difference in version one and version two, I will come up just by after discussing this. Okay. But yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, so yeah. so uh, regarding the routing uh, base or policy base VDN, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's uh, the mechanism before uh, like version one and version two, right? Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Oh, I can you. use both in version one as well as version two. Okay. It's not like I can't use a policy based VPN on version two. These are again, a category of like VPN has a different level of category. So one we just talking about policy based and route based. This is one of the type where we can use both of them or means we can use any one of them with version one or version two. The difference between version and version two is uh, simply in terms of the uh, number of messages and the type of bandwidth it consumes. The bandwidth when it consumes to form this tunnel, how many number of messages are exchanged to form the tunnel? Okay, it's just like when you and uh, you want to connect to me, how much of efforts you want to make to connect with me? If you're able to connect with me with two, just just putting up two messages in my uh, WhatsApp that uh, hey, uh, just this is the work we can we connect. So if we are able to connect it very in a very with less number of messages, it is more better in terms of less bandwidth you're trying to utilize. Okay. So version one and version two are achieving the same role, the same uh, output. I mean, the output doesn't go differ. Okay. It doesn't differ. The goal is the same, 
but to achieve that goal whether you are taking less number of steps or more number of steps that is the only difference okay so with version 1 you are you are having these two different phases which we say where we first want to authenticate each other you know before we actually talk let's say you come to me and uh, we want to have that you know information share with each other so before you we before we go and start with the information i will first try to know who you are you are working where um, and who am i i am working where we will try to authenticate each other we will try to decide that the protocol under which we will talk okay we will try to negotiate okay this is what i understand i this i don't understand this is way, the way we will try to first establish a basic understanding of authenticating each other and agreeing on set of parameters which we would use to communicate so that is the job of phase 1 and phase 2 is where we will trying to achieve the role of okay now i am trying to put my data and uh, i will put with my data with ensuring all the security so here in phase 2 you will be finding the encapsulation and uh, encryption of your traffic okay so that's the part of phase 1 and phase 2 okay some people say tunnel 1 and tunnel 2 i don't believe in using that words but you can use the same that you have a the major big tunnel first and then you are taking up another phase with the where you are putting up the traffic okay simply let's take it stick to this terms phase 1 and phase 2 so phase 1 you try to authenticate the peers and you try to negotiate on the set of parameters what you want to talk to and in phase 2 then you take your traffic try to encapsulate it encrypt it and send it okay so basically you are again trying to negotiate the way you will try to encapsulate your traffic encrypt your traffic okay initially you have discussed about yourself the peers okay in the next phase you are trying to decide that what kind of uh, in, uh, encryption we are going to use when we will encrypt our data traffic what kind of uh, integrity algorithms i will use what kind of modes i will use okay so here again there is no actual traffic so in phase 1 and phase 2 we haven't sent any traffic yet guys we are just planned and designed uh, the tunnel i can say the traffic will be then initiated and then only we say the tunnel is up the tunnel is up only when the desired or the interesting traffic is initiated okay means what guys you have configured you have configured things but you may not just say after configuration now i have my tunnel up the tunnel will not come up until you have the desired traffic to go from site a to site b you just created it the path is ready but until and unless the traffic doesn't go through that path you can't say the tunnel is up the tunnel will only come up only when the desired traffic starts from either side that you will be defining it based on whatever you are using policies or routing base that okay i am allowing this traffic to go towards the site b so whenever that traffic comes then only my tunnel will come up that is what in this terminology we say the tunnel is up or the tunnel is down okay so whenever the desired or the interesting traffic starts then only the tunnel comes up so phase 1 phase 2 no data traffic guys okay this is something which i am telling because many of the people they get confused during the interviews there is no data we can simply say these are kind of control plane traffics control plane messages okay normally in the world of security or networking we have these terminologies known as control plane and data plane where control plane is kind of exchanging all these control messages where there is no actual traffic passing through it the actual traffic will pass after this tunnel has got created and when the, somebody is initiating a traffic like somebody is trying to go and access it a ping or trying to do https or trying to do ftp some file download when we are trying to initiate any of these protocols those traffic then only we will go see that the tunnel the traffic will come and when the traffic will generate 
then it will use a different set of protocols. The first phase, I hope everyone has understood version one and version two. This is the thing which we will choose when we will be designing the IPsec, we will be given an option whether you want to go with version one or whether you want to go with version two. Okay. The difference is only in terms of the number of messages. The goal is the same. You want to go with the same goal, but you're with the less number of messages, you're able to achieve this tunneling. You're forming the tunnel. Step number three. So step one uh, basically is the phase one. Step two is basically the phase two. Step three, let me discuss that also. And then we will go with the demo guys, because I don't want to go purely theoretical here. So once you form phase one, phase two, the next step is where your traffic will generate, right? That's what we just discussed. That traffic is not yet passed in phase one and phase two. It's a control plane messages. So in the step three, we will have the actual data. Okay. So here the data will be encapsulated with the help of the protocol like ESP or with the help of which we say AH. Okay. And here we also get an option to choose the modes, whether I would go with tunnel mode of thing or whether I go with transport mode. So this negotiation and all we have done in phase two. Whether your data will be encapsulated with ESP or AH or whether your data will go with the tunnel mode or transport mode, these all negotiation we have completed in phase two. Okay. And phase one, we are authenticated each other. Like what authentication, whether site A is genuinely, site B is genuine. We have proved each other our identity. We have agreed on what the tunnel, how would it, how it would be formed and what security parameters it would be formed. All those negotiation has happened. So this is your step three, where actually your data is being passing through. So in just three steps, step one, step two, step three, you are able to form or achieve your IPsec thing. So to understand all the number of messages, the protocols, it will take a little bit of time because here you need to go with Wireshark analysis, the PCAP, where I need to show you all those messages that are exchanged to form phase one, phase two, and then the actual messages will not be directly seen as ping traffic. You won't be seeing the ping traffic as ping. ICMP will not be seen. It will be encapsulated within ESP or AH. HTTPS or FTP, which is happening between site A and site B will not be seen clearly. It will be encrypted and encapsulated within these protocols. So that is how you can ensure whether your tunnel is working properly or not, but whatever you have created is working as per the requirement or not. And this phase one and phase two, when we are saying I, I version one, basically they're implemented with the help of ISA KMP. Now this is another set of protocol, which we say. So ISA KMP has two phases, phase one and phase two. Okay. So this is again a protocol where used to implement phase one and phase two. To, so just to summarize, IPsec is a suite of protocols, has various set of protocols. First is IC version one and version two. In version one, we use this ISA KMP protocol to achieve phase one and phase two. Okay. In version two, we have the same goal to form the tunnel, but with less number of messages and with more better efficiency, we can form the tunnel. Majority of the people today in our enterprise, we make use of version two. Okay. And step three is where we actually send the traffic, not simply, but by encapsulating either with this protocol and choosing either of this mode. Now this again has their plus and minus when to choose ESP, when to choose AH, when to go for tunnel mode, when to go for transport mode, all of these are there as per the customer's requirement, customer scenario, we can discuss this. Okay. And all of these analysis, all of these messages, you can understand with the help of Varsha. So we have not gone into the detailed theory yet, but just given you a very superficial way of understanding this IPsec. Okay. So at today we are only discussing site to site VPN, which is implemented using IPsec. IPsec has these many set of protocols or these are the steps. 
where we are able to form the virtual tunnel. Okay. Uh, if you have any queries here, you can go ahead. And uh, we can start with the demo. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, there's some noise in the background. Hello. I'm sorry, I could not get you. What is your query? Ma'am, when we create the VPN, site to site VPN, uh -huh. with the public IP address, is there any possibility in the firewall to mask the IP? Yes, we can do that. It is possible that you can try to form it. Maybe uh, we, you want to simply uh, NAT make you can make use of a NATing router again there. Okay, so you can have a NAT device. Maybe your firewall is not facing the internet directly. Your firewall is facing your uh, ISP service provider router, and then you have an internet. And then again, on this side, you may have a service provider router or you may directly have your firewall and then you would have your backend network. So yeah, that is a different scenario altogether again, when you would have a NAT device or a NAT router or you want to translate your IP, you can do that. Okay. Okay. My own basic question, uh, like does ISP knows like if you are forming the, uh, no. like a tunneling? No, 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 no. They shouldn't be aware itself. That is the goal, right? The internet which we are using, ISP is again a kind of a network who would just know the basic routing, like who is directly connected to me or where I should be forwarding the packet when I receive it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That basic routing I have to do, but it would not be, I should not be saying it, uh, I would not be advertising my local area networks anywhere else. Okay. That's the goal, right? When you're talking private, communication none of the people over the internet would know what uh, or would not be aware of those networks what you have because normally when we say end-to-end -end communication in a normal mm -hmm. networking scenario when you just put down some routers you connect them then we mean to say that every router should have end-to-end -end visibilities and then the point-to-point -point communication can happen properly but in this scenario we are not going to advertise our local area networks okay just going to set, we are going to put but up the default rules Mm -hmm. Okay, but in LAN we have some servers. Like, a, imagine we have India Lambra servers are there, and USA client. I need to give the services to the USA client. Then mm -hmm. at the time we are advertising the routes to the uh, towards internet, right? At the time they come to know, like this. So you are not there. advertising dosi. You are going to form uh for this particular. You are going to form a tunnel between these two peers, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever yeah. network you are going to have your private network, your private network would be encapsulated with your public facing your firewalls uh, out in facing IP. There will be another header which will get inserted. So your router will make a decision on the basis of these external header. It will not be able to decrypt and understand your internal private information. Mm. So when you're yeah. forming an IPsec tunnel, right, you are basically taking up like a hold of your traffic. Let me just uh, draw that thing. You're taking up, let's say your L7, L3 to L7 traffic is there. Okay. So you're mm -hmm. trying to encrypt it. After that, you're trying to encapsulate with this ESP or AH with the help of either the tunnel mode or transport mode. So when you will be encapsulating it, you will be putting again the IP header information here. And then comes your L2 and then you will be passing it. So this IP header, which you will be putting up, that will be the pure IPs. Okay. Okay. So your internal networks are never exposed. So your yeah. router will make decision on the basis of the IP header, which it can see. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Ma'am, one more thing. See, I want to establish uh, EP VPN connection, okay, from my uh, end user to the client, okay. And uh, what happened, I'm doing the easy VPN configuration, so which includes the crypto configuration. So what happens if I did the mistake in my crypto configuration? So what are the possible ways that I can identify easily? 
the the issue is with your uh, crypto thing exactly then see when we are forming up these tunnel right uh, these phase 1 phase 2 we are trying to see that there are some control plane messages because these are completely phase 1 and phase 2 is completely control plane messages so after that only you will see the traffic so when you are right. forming this control plane messages right mm -hmm. the negotiation is going to happen and it will be yeah. trying to negotiate on the basis of the algorithms which are configured on both the sides right if i am trying to support mm -hmm. aes and you okay. don't support aes okay. okay so basically we will not be able to form a that particular phase one itself where where we are trying to negotiate like see i have set of algorithms and the other sides and let me tell you we know that these two sides are on a different ge geographical location and there are two different set of engineer who is doing this work okay so when we will start this before we start we are going to set up you know that meeting where we will de decide that what kind of algorithms we are going to choose for setting up this ip sec so majorly the packet captures play a very big role in understanding whether where are we stuck are we stuck in phase 1 messages or are we stuck in phase 2 messages so when we will run a packet capture at both of our sites okay where i will be sending my main message one and then from there i will see whether the negotiation is happening or not so with the help of packet captures that's the best way to understand whether the negotiation is happening correctly or not there itself we can clearly identify whether the phase 1 what is the problem where is and you can start the debug on the other side on the responder side whenever you are starting the traffic from any of the side let's say site 1 is the initiator okay and here is the responder you have started the message 1 okay then there is no message to coming up from the other side so before you go with this message 1 and message 2 also the very very basic thing would what i would say is your underlay network should be there your underlay network should be reachable that's the basic thing when people for, they forget that before you go and set up a tunnel your site a would be at least be able to reach the site b with the normal you know connectivity should be there if your normal connectivity itself is missing how can you form a tunnel over it you know so first check whether the basic connectivity is there between site a to site b if that particular thing is been uh, you know you have checked that okay site a is reachable to site b i have tried to ping or trace it and i can see that reachability is there once the reachability is there then comes your phase one messages you can start to be taking look towards the packet capture or you can start looking it towards the debugs where you can start the debug at the responder side and you will get to know which particular algorithm or which message is where the clash is happening so fine ma'am so so in this case so whatever you said so i'm able sorry, to your voice uh, was breaking all... voice was breaking what was your query okay can you able to hear me now ma'am yeah okay so what i'm saying is uh, i'm able to see all the traffic okay uh, whatever have uh, initiated from my source okay the concern is after from my fire all and i'm not able to uh, get the internet so what after i again missed your query that you have formed a phase you are able to see the messages and after what correct yeah so i'm able to see my traffic okay so what have i initiated from my source but yeah. still uh, i'm not able to see the i'm not able to access the internet but my from the routing part everything is fine so whatever i verified it's fine so what would be the cause of the reason i still am not getting the internet you are trying to access internet yes purely it would be a local traffic not the any internet applications if you are trying to access the internet then you have might have defined you need to define a rule where you want to have see only a set of networks would be passing through the tunnel the rest of the network which we may call it as split tunneling where the other set of networks would have to go via the internet so have you defined those rules correctly or not yeah i am saying this also included okay i have defined my rule whatever i have to send my traffic so after doing this but still i am not able to access the internet okay then definitely we will need to check out the specific you know logs or not because when you are talking about mm -hmm. internet it's a different set of mm -hmm. when you are talking about vpn 
Mm -hmm. then you are able to your question should be like okay through the vpn you are accessing the internet or you are accessing the you have made a different rule for accessing the internet no Because as i said yeah mm -hmm. i made a different rule to access the internet so that would be the right uh, thing hmm. not through the vpn no because there are ways there are there are been configurations mm -hmm. where we try to you know if you don't configure well most of your traffic may go, get routed through the vpn you may be reaching to the internet which we normally try to avoid such kind of a design as it will consume lot of resources okay okay so, uh -huh. yeah because when you try to go towards you know um, access anything over let's say you are doing remotely your work right Mm -hmm. so when you are going for a remote work you are logging into your uh, system and you might be connecting it to any of your uh, remote client maybe an any connect or a global protect in case of a palo so any of this if you are trying to connect with so based on the configurations what the administrator might have done on the site your traffic would be entirely not only for your resources which are there on your company site even when you are normally accessing your internet okay where is the traffic getting routed like is it going via the vpn or is it where the set of traffic for the for the internet have they given a split tunneling for it it's a different configuration which is set it at the by the administrator itself so when i am accessing my enterprise laptop i'm logging in i'm connecting my vpn in i access internet or i access their uh, the resources that i have it on my site it would go via the vpn <laughs> itself okay see the concern is uh, as you said we have done split tunneling for the certain branch location for the testing purpose and we have defined the certain rules uh, to access the uh, internet uh, so in this case i'm facing certain issues so that's the reason i have asked you that that then definitely it would be based on your vendor uh -huh. uh, we need uh -huh. to deep dive into those logs and need to check all right all right fine fine there could not be a generic answer for this Understood. Understood. Okay, let me check the logs once again. Huh? Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. You. Do check the logs. Do check uh -huh. the uh, percentage. Uh, the mm -hmm. network rule has been designed for split tunnel. Direct access mm -hmm. internet is being given. Whether mm -hmm. specific policies are in place uh, to route the traffic via the internet. So once mm -hmm. you check and specifically with the vendor specific, you have to check those demon logs and everything in that manner. All right. We got got it. Uh, let me check that. Huh? Thank you so much. Sure. Sure. Okay, guys. Uh, so that was a set of questions. Any other question? One more question, mm -hmm. madam. Suppose we have multiple ISPs. Suppose four ISPs is permitted on the firewall, and we are created the VPN. Suppose from the one ISP. Mm -hmm. Suppose this ISP is some time due to certain reason it is down. On those mm -hmm. scenarios, how this tunnel works? So you would be connecting this in a kind of a. full mesh connection or you would be putting up in this is the kind of like a hub and a spoke topology or you want to have a point to point topology what's the kind of a topology means presently point to point topology right now as mm -hmm. we discussed okay so your your site has been connected to isp1 and isp2 or let's say four service providers you want to say yeah and okay. one of the service provider is services is presently not available then mm -hmm. also we have to manually reconfigure the isp2 p to p or uh, it is already be configured and just we have to switch over no no then that, that is that you have to based on if you are using a route based vpn then you can dynamically form it but ma manually you might have configured all the configuration and that is kind of a like a fallback like if isp1 fails then you may have to connect it via the isp2 right so If you are using a route based VPN, there we can have a configuration in terms of you know routing. There, okay, I can choose a different uh, way of because where the, that's the entities are fixed, right? Your entities are fixed. If your firewall is configured as a VPN gateway, your peers are fixed. If you are forming your uh, uh, VPN entity on your ISP, then it's a different story. ISP is just one of the hop, right, between these two. Firewall entities, correct? Right, ma'am. It's just one Second. of the hop. The the Second. peers are not changing. So if your ISP has gone wrong, your tunnel may go down definitely. 
but if you have created a way of you know where you are trying to support uh, the traffic to go in a uh, you know the fallback when this goes down then you have a different route available because that is completely routing if you have a different route available then accordingly it will take see normally what happens we use this first hop redundancy thing where we make use of these virtual ips to configure so even if your isp1 fails your virtual ip will take care and isp2 can take care of the communication right right and their virtual ip is also a public ip or a private ip ma'am no that would be based on whatever your con your it is completely on your customers uh, environment side right so it would be on one end it will be facing towards the public and on the other end it would be private okay second thing is madam load balancing is also possible during the with the tunnel actually suppose we are configured two tunnel at one time mm -hmm. then load balancing is to be possible over there also load balancing is like if you are so again i am saying this is if you have a uh, equal cost multipath where you have traffic which can be uh, which is like the routes are available and all of their cost is uh, cost is all same and everything like that right in that scenario we can say that the traffic can get routed towards different equally the traffic can get routed from that path right because right. sometimes it may possible that in the organization suppose there is a 6000 uh, employees working mm -hmm. so it may not possible that only for the one vpn or one isp all the traffic has to be routed so instead of that we have a multi people is supposed to be there yes yes, yes. and, and have... you would have different set of routing protocols also running you won't be using a static routing there you would choose an ospf or you may choose an eigrp or an internal bjp for routing those right. things and you may support right. equal cost multipath over there so that will it, that will take care of your loading load balancing your traffic but this concept is also covered in the like a palo alto and rest of the firewall how we can see, see the topologies this? see the firewalls remains the firewalls don't change as per the topologies right you your concept still remains the same it's only the ease of configuration and the implementation where less of efforts less of you know uh, resources like your ram your cores are utilized for doing that job or effectively the parallel because in palo it's completely parallel processing that happens the architecture is completely different but the job role is the same so either you use uh, you bring a vendor like ftd over there or you bring a palo or a 40 they will all do or support those things because any customer maybe reliance is having a different set of topology and uh, tata is having a different set of topology they are bringing up these devices they all any devices they bring up and they set up their topology it should support it will support all of these scenarios so there will be nothing Not like you will face a, a glitch or a hitch that okay if i place a palo then this will work and if i place an ftd this will not work it is not like that it all comes you know when you choose any vendor product it completely based on the uh, reports that the gartner report comes you see what kind of stability that product has majorly we look into the stability point of view that whether the product is quite stable under all kind of you know scenarios and the configurations because sometimes if you say the product is behaving having a buggy behavior sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes we don't understand what is the root cause of it the code breaks you know in that scenario only the firewall you know the vendors are lacking behind when you talk about these fire firewalls also when we say that 40 or palo is standing first second and then comes the checkpoint and the ftd and all they are only because in terms of their code and the architecture how stable they are in the market how well the customers are able to use it with ease the configuration the scenarios what they have how easily they can configure implement migrate with all those things they select the uh, firewall what kind of how many tunnels i can form how many how much of money i have to invest in so all these parameters are there to when you select it but all the con the conceptual level still remains the same you can implement ipsec in all the five you can implement ssl vpn in all the five you can implement identity thing in all the five so the concept still remains the same right got it um, okay ma'am okay 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 so let's quickly go and just check up one demo on this ftd guys we have a lot of theories guys there's basically a lot of theory to understand each and everything in deep 
let me just take up a very quick demo on this FTD part and uh, then we can wind up for the day. So tomorrow, uh, mostly I will be touching some parts on high availability and uh, on RAVPN concept. So let me show you, I'll clear this diagram. Okay, so coming to the topology. So in currently, I will just show you the topology which we have built. We will be adding up more and you can also build up more. So I hope all of you are able to see in the screen. And there's a set of things which are being developed here. From S core point of view, you should be, we will be learning different types of uh, malwares, you know, virus, trojan, different vulnerability attacks, threats, what kind of attacks we have. So we can simulate some of those using this, you know, Kali Linux and all those kind of a thing. So we have one of these scenario. Uh, then we have some scenarios on VPN, like DM VPN, because in Cisco, they have a lot of different VPNs with different terminologies like Flex VPN, Get VPN, and all those things. So basically, Cisco uses a lot of terminologies to define the things. Site to site VPN, you can see here, we have a topology on here. Automation is one of the part nowadays which we are using to do configuration on the multiple set of FMCs and FTD, which we have. Okay, then web security appliances, ICE. We do have an ICE part here. I don't know if it is completely visible. Oh, to you. Sorry, your screen is uh, white, uh, nothing here. Is it? Yes. Okay. Last five yeah, on, only white okay. word only. Uh, okay, I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, is it now visible? Yes, now it's yes, yes. Oh, Okay, okay. So I thought the screen I had a completely shared, so it might be, okay, no worries. So yeah, I was just showing you this, the topology that is built. Uh, so let me just go towards the right side. So I was just talking about this different uh, scenarios which we have created for simulating the attacks on the side, the VPN concepts, DM VPN, then uh, the site-to-site -site VPN, which we have here. Then uh, we do have some automation part where we can use some scripts to configure the interfaces or bring up the logs. Because nowadays, majority of the things are moving towards automation. So some scripts which are developed using REST API, uh, Python and all, we can use that and try to use this. So this is the topologies which are being created and we're still adding on things. We do have a scenario for web security appliance, then ICE, NGIPS for snort thing. So just an overview over here. So we are today, we will be targeting on this side to side VPN as this is easier to go first. Uh, so we have an internal, there are two sites or three sites you can see here, the three red devices, what you see is the firewall, FTD. And you can consider this is one of my network, inside network with the subnet 192.168.20.0. These are the outside, this is considered like one of the hop or such kind of a thing can be considered like an internet. And you have another site here which is with subnet 192.168.40 and another site here, okay, where I've not specified the IP, but we can give one subnet over here. So, so today's job would be to connect these two, let's say the sales and the engineering department, they would want to communicate over the VPN, okay? So how would we go with? So this is the FTD, which is the next generation firewall of Cisco. And here you can see one green one, which is the FMC. That is your manager or firewall management center. Normally, most of the firewalls, they have a manager which holds all of these sensors. We say sometimes sensors also to these devices, FTDs. So they manage all of these sensors, like means configuring the policies and managing the logs. Everything becomes easier via the Instead of going and configuring individually, you take you just register the, the devices on this manager 
and you try to push all the policies, all the configuration via the manager. So normally in Palo Alto, you also have this panorama who is managing all the Palo Alto sensors. That makes life a little easy. Like if let's say an administrator has to handle 50 firewalls or thousands of firewalls, he won't just jump into each and every SSH access and he will take the SSH or the GUI access and try to do the configuration. Just take all these, register all these sensors to this common manager and then try to do all your deployment. Life is easy then. And all of these sites, guys, normally are always in redundant. High availability concept is there. Though it is not mentioned here or not, we have not connected a device here. But most of the configuration, 99.999% of the time, since in networking, we never go with one point of contact failure. So all of the devices are always in HA, that is high availability. Always a redundant devices are being there. Like even in FMC, we will have a redundant FMC. Or we consider this redundancy as a high availability concept. So all the sites would have a pair of firewall where if one of them goes down, the other can take up the communication. So we don't have any bottleneck there. Okay. So currently it is not there, but we can connect those devices and make the high availability available there. So when you will have to see all of these devices are first needs to be connected via the management port in one specific subnet. So the FMZ, the FTD, you will see that all of them are connected via the management network. So they are on one subnet, on management subnet, which is 91.1.91.1.0 subnet. Okay. So 91.1.1.0 subnet. In this case, if you see the FTD has dot 59 on site one and on site two, it is dot 60, the management IP. Okay. So all of these management IP, they should be reachable because they are all, the FMC should be having the connectivity to all the sensors. So they are all connected via the management port or on a management network. So when I will be trying to register these devices on my sensors, it will be via the management IP only. That using the management IP, I will try to register them. So just quickly, let me show you the IP. So basic management IP configurations are done on these two firewalls. There is nothing else which we, we have come done over there. And on the router end, basic IP configuration has been done. So if I show you the uh, things, here we have the FMC. So this is how you will see the FMC, where you will just try to configure the IP. When you will start with, you will load the image with the, whatever version you have. Currently, we are running on 6.7. We always ensure that the management IP, uh, the configuration, the OS, version is equivalent or higher than your sensors. Okay. Whenever you're running any FMC, you have to ensure that the operating system version is same as your sensors or the operating system version could be higher than the others. Okay. So let's say in FMC, we are using currently 6.7.0. Then the FTDs are also in the same version. Okay, you cannot have a reverse way where your FMC is on a lower version and your FTDs are at a higher version. This follows the principle is the same even if you go across different vendor. That the manager is always equivalent or higher than the sensors, the version, the OS version. So just configure the IP, management IP, and then you just see 91.1.1.100 is that is what I have put it in the browser. And then you can simply go and try to log in. So let me just log in. So in this case, nothing has been done yet. So you will see a lot of tabs like overview, analysis, policies. So when you go into the policies, you will see a lot of policies where you can go with access control policies, intrusion or detection or prevention. It's not here, you can say. Malware, DNS, identity, SSL, pre-filter. So these are all about the policies. Then when you talk about analysis, the events, whatever logs you want to see, the traffic you want to see, you can go and check out in the events. So the terms are different. When you go across different firewall, you may see there as logs, traffic logs, spread logs, and all those things. Here it is considered as events. Whenever you're learning different set of firewalls, guys, don't just get confused because the concept is still the same. Only the way 
you can see that each of them has a different terms to say that dashboard which will give you the entire access of whatever applications are running the major ips which are being destination ip the geographical uh, distribution of traffic all those things you will see so what do you have to do first without further delay let's start with this so you will get into the device management where you will need to add up your sensors okay so here you will get into add and then you will need to specify the device now before you jump there you need to tell your sensors who is your manager because until and unless you don't don't do the configuration on the ftd side that will not be complete so before you jump to fmc make sure that you get into those ftds i'll just show you the network that what ip has been configured so when you write show network you would see that 91.1.1 is my gateway ftd1 and the ip which is configured is 91.1.59 okay so currently this is the management ip okay if i want to see if any managers are configured on this ftds i will just go and write show managers so when i click on write show managers it will say currently that there are no managers configured manager is nothing but your fmc so you will simply write configure manager add you want to write the and you will put the ip of your manager which was 91.1.100 and there is a key you will give okay you will give this key for registration so that when the manager when you will be configuring it will ask what is the key so that it can say that it's the same or not so you will write let's say cisco i'm just putting cisco you can use any word so this is the first thing you will do on the sensor after configuring the ip management ip the dns the dhcp whatever you want to configure after doing the first job the next thing is to configure the manager if you want to manage the device via fmc cisco does give option where you don't want to manage via fmc let's say you don't want to go and you have only few devices in your network only three four firewalls you have you don't want a manager for it no problem you can do it locally manage this devices that will be considered as fdm okay firepower device manager when we say that the device is not managed by anybody it is locally managed we say that it is fdm so cisco does give that phrase when you want to manage locally without using a fmc that is considered as an on box thing when you do only ftds are there you don't have fmc that will be considered as a local management you're doing it locally so currently you can see that you have configured here but you need to do it on the uh what do you say on the fmc side so i'll come to the fmc i'll go and add the device it will ask me to put the ip management ip so here it is 91.1.59 that was the ip management ip of my ftd1 i can display put the display name let's say it is site a with this then the registration key it will ask me i'll give the name cisco because that was the key which i had used if you don't put the right key it will try to say the failure has happened it won't be able to add the device properly you can put them into a specific group if you want to let me say none give a assign a policy because every device what you will register will be, need to be assigned a policy so we will say create new policy if you don't have and let's say i'll try to write test vpn as the name of the policy and currently let the default action be block we normally keep the default as block and we will create this policy and assign it to this device and once we are done with this you can assign them the licensing currently this fmc is registered with an evaluation license so you can get this for 90 days free so you can select all these licenses and then you can simply say register so meanwhile this is registering let's go into the ftd2 and try to configure the manager even here so first let me check whether any managers are configured once it says no then i will jump into configure manager add so manager was 91.1.1.100 and let's use this key you can use a different key also so now let's get back to the fmc so your it is showing that it is adding the first device so let it get added
So you can see this registration is happening. So in the process of registration, there is a lot of tasks here. The tunneling, SF tunnel is formed. There is a communication happening on TCP port 8305. There are a lot of things going in the background. Okay. Then the policies, the licenses will be applied. The health policy will be applied. So if you can check that all in this task, so the red thing, what you will see, you will click on it. So it will show you currently what it is trying to do. So when I am clicking on it, I can get the notifications currently what is happening inside the task. So it is saying communication is being established, discovery is in process. Okay. Then it will apply the policy, the licensing, all of them. So what we will do, meanwhile, this is happening. We will go and try to add another device for the site B. Okay. So let me come out of this. Oh, I don't know what actually uh, uh, policy means. We have demand like a uh, internet firewall and external firewall, you know, like a uh, semi perimeter file like that. We can define this one of the firewall. Like, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry that your voice was breaking. I could not hear you clearly on Fortinet. You have what terms? Uh, no, madam. Actually, you, you, you told right. Um, we define the file policy to add the one of the firewall in the manager, right? FMC. Uh -huh. So that policy means that. Uh, it, it 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 is an indication like a uh, uh, external or internet uh, internet firewall like that meaning or, or something different so it's the policy here it means it's a like normally see on firewall on every device you would have to deploy one policy right it could be one yes, or yes. number of the you can have number of rules inside one policy yes it's yes one policy in that you may create number of rules so whenever you are trying to register any uh, firewall here through this manager, you're trying to assign one policy, which you can later change also. Okay. 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 Yeah. But because yeah. that's a default configuration that is asked and that policy, you can have n number of configuration, but every device should be a part of one policy. Okay. 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 So inside okay. that policy, you define n number of rules. That's not a problem. Yeah, sure. So here we would have 91.1.60 guys. That was the, uh, the next uh, FTD. So here I will consider this as site B. And post this, I will put the Cisco as a key. And again, I can use the same policy or I can define a new policy. It's up to me. Your devices can, 10 devices can be a part or uh, using, can use the same policy also. So it's policy assignment. You can change it even later. That's not something which is fixed at the start only. You can modify it later. And then you can register the second device. So this is what you have onboarded your sensors on your manager. Now, rest of the configuration will begin from here that you will try to configure one by one and then you will push this configuration. So all your configurations, you will do it via FMC and then you will try to use this deploy for committing. It's like a commit where you are trying to push and save the configurations on those devices. Uh, yes, Taimur, what is your query? Do you, did you raise your hand? Okay, cool. So meanwhile, when these two sites, uh, the devices are getting registered. So yeah, these are the two entities via on which the VPN, between which the VPN tunnel would be established. So we will take the third one later. Now in between there is one hop, which we have considered as a router. So when you will go and access this router, I have just configured the IP. Okay. Okay. So show IP interface brief will give you the IP. So on one side it is 181 and on the other side it is 182. So there is nothing else configured on this. I can show you even the routing. Only the directly connected networks should be seen here. So on 00, zero you have 181 and on 0 slash 1 you have 182. So 00, zero is on this side facing on site A firewall and 01 is facing site B firewall. So we have not configured anything else. Only the IP configuration is done on the router. So let's come back to our uh, FMC. So I see that both the devices are getting registered. Site A is completely registered. Site B is under the process. So here you will see that you have this edit option where you will simply click on the edit option. And here you get a lot of things to be seen 
I can dismiss all these notifications. You can see that. Uh, let me mute everyone because I can see. Yeah. So you may find the different interfaces this device has. So currently you can see that it has Giga Diagnostic, which is the kind of management interface. Uh, gigabit 00010203 okay and you have routing which you can do the routing configuration here okay and you can also configure the dhcp here so this is like the basic configuration and this is all about the device configuration what all things the device has how much of uh, basic parameters it will show you what licenses it is having what mode now currently we also will be learning the different modes of firewall because FTD is a kind of uh, combination of ASA plus firepower that is not. So when we say about ASA, it makes use of the Lina engine. And when it's, when you talk about the snot, uh, the firepower thing, it is completely the snot thing. So there are different modes here in the FTD. So here currently we are using the routed mode. Then the license is what you have. The basic, when you will enable the basic license, the evaluation one, you'll get it for malware threat and all. But if you want to go with RA VPN and uh, those kind of configuration, then you would need a smart licensing uh, for that. You can't just go with the evaluation mode. And these are all system configuration related details. So let's quickly go and configure the interfaces on this. So... I'll go to the 00, which you can see that the IP I've already configured there, which is 20.1. Okay. There was already some configuration that was done on those devices before. So on the internal side, it is 20.1. And on the outside, and you can see the zones also. Okay. The security zones that is being uh, created. So 192.168 is my inside network. And 181.1.1 .1 is my outside one. So this is the interface configuration first you will do. You can also set up a DHCP because all your internal network would always need a DHCP IP. You can go and give the configuration from here, the DNS server. And you can, if you have not given, you can just add it here, the pool of addresses. So here in this case, my inside interface will become the DHCP server. And I can always give the pool that it will start from 192.168.20.10, assuming to 192.168.20.20. Okay, so I'm giving one pool and I will say that it is a server, DHCP server. I can also provide the DNS server and there is advanced configuration of DHCP also there where you can also give the DHCP options if you want to go for a specific advanced DHCP related configuration. So I've done a basic DHCP server. Routing, I want to do a default routing so i currently choose only static view so let me go to the static route that any network i want to go my default route is the next hop which is the router's uh, ip so here i have option of ipv4 ipv6 i can simply go and say add route and i can mention that uh, any ipv4 when i want to go that is default network and that will go out of my outside interface right so i'll select that interface here why is it not coming? Okay, just a second. IP. Let me close this. Oh, okay, something has happened in the connection. Just a minute, guys. Give me one second. Okay. Good. Just give me a minute. I'm just trying to connect.
Okay. So yeah, the connection is back. Just let me know whether you're able to see the screen. Okay, so here we can now select. Let me refresh it once. So here we will be choosing the outside. Guys, you're able to view the screen, right? And so we are doing the routing, static routing part. So the outside interface, any IP or uh, the gateway, we will try to put as uh, the 181 subnet. So I've already created one object for it. So you can see that uh, the IP for this is 181.1.1.2, which is our next hop. So I'll select that. You can decide the metric. So this is the static routing we are doing that any default route comes, you just pass it to the next hop. So we are setting up the static group. We can choose any other routing protocol as well. So you'll say, okay. And once you're done with that, you can just, so we have done the interface configuration. We have connected the DHCP server. We have done the routing. So we are good with this. We can save this configuration. And once you're done with this device, so on site A, we can go on the site B. Normally, it doesn't take that amount of time. Maybe there is some network issue on the back end. Okay, so you're done with this, guys. Then you can get into the different, uh, the other side device. 91.1.60. By then, I guess the side B device might have got registered. Yeah. So I can go and do the same thing. So here also you can see the IP configuration has been done. 
So internal network is 40.1 and uh, the outside network is 182.1.1. So even here, I can go with the DHCP configuration and the routing configuration, same as site A. So let's quickly get into the routing or the DHCP. So here, So again, I'll choose static routing. Okay, don't just assume this firewall is a little slow. It is because my network is pretty slow. Okay, so I'll just go and add. Again, choose the outside network for all the thing. Choose any IPv4 who wants to go outside. Uh, give the gateway. So this time the gateway will be the next uh, 182.1.2. So the second FTD's gateway is this 182.1.2. And then simply save. I don't know why is it taking so slow. Let me do one thing. Refresh this page. Okay, there is something wrong, guys, I believe, on the back end network where I'm not able to get it so quick. Okay, guys, I'll do one thing. Uh, as this lab, I don't know why this is getting stuck. It shouldn't be getting stuck this way. Somewhere there is my network issue, which is falling short of. So I will take up this tomorrow. I'll continue again this. Uh, I'll finish up this tomorrow, this topology. Okay. By then I will check the resources which I have given. Uh, why is it taking so long to load it? So tomorrow we would continue with the uh, completion of this uh, topology. And we will also look into a kind of a scenario where I will discuss more on the, the hub and spoke part and the route based VPN part. Because today what we, will be, what we were trying to implement was on a policy based VPN. We will try to use the VTI concept, the route-based VPN as well, and uh, use the similar, uh, understand the difference between the route-based and the policy-based VPN to cover up this topology. Okay, I'm so extremely sorry that there is some issue happening on my network side, due to which I could not complete this topology right now. But tomorrow at the same time, when we will connect, we will finish up completely this hardware, the topology part. There won't be much of a theoretical discussion on that.
route based policy based we will clear it and we will take up your doubts if you have any questions for the day uh, you can let me know So my question is this: What about the class timing? It's a uh, weekdays or weekend? Uh, I guess uh, it should be on a. As per my knowledge, it would be on a week weekend only. But uh, if there are multiple candidates who are requesting for a weekday batch, then yeah. we should be we would be doing for that. So when you would be discussing with our uh, backend team like Sagar or Sajid, uh, okay. I have their details. So okay. Just. Uh, give your preferences what is okay, your right. availability or your schedule and we see that majority of the audience is looking out for a weekly batch and if we have sufficient audience where we can split the batch over a weekday and weekend accordingly we can go ahead okay and uh, the I mean uh, total duration of this course mm -hmm. so the duration, uh, the duration of this course uh, will be basically when we will start with the S4 and all uh, the concepts ASA, FTD and all other detailing on the CCNP, it would be roughly, it depends again, whether you're taking up a weekday or a weekend batch. Okay, if you are taking up a weekend batch, then it may go for a longer time, maybe three months or four months. And if you're taking a weekday batch, then accordingly, we can wind up, you know, depending on the number of hours it is. So three months is default. Three, three months is default, you said. Yes, I mean it would extend if base on the basis of the weekday or weekend because you would be covering up ASA, we would be covering up uh, FTD, we would be covering up VPN, and uh, ICE was would be also a part of this. Like uh, so, complete CCNP like kind of. Uh, not 100% sure kind of means because uh, we are just trying to figure out basing on the basis of the audience since that whether ice needs to be kept as a separate batch or uh, because that would be completely I am not the right person to take up this query uh, it would be perfectly handled by uh, Sajid or Sagar. okay thank you thank you so much yeah. all right thank you thank you so much for the day uh, most welcome I hope people had uh, uh, sufficient understanding for the today's demo and I see you people yeah. when the batch commences. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a, have a good night. You. Any other queries, guys, with other person, other people? See, I would uh, I would request most of you, if you have any doubts related to the batch timings, the batch duration, the course fee, the details, everything, please connect to the uh, team. See uh, the Sagar Sajid, we have their details. So connect with them and get your doubts resolved. Okay, so tomorrow mostly one of them would join, post the session so you can have those queries with them. All right, guys, so I'm ending it for the day if there are no doubts. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome.